If we break down the words gaseous exchange, we'll understand a little bit more about what this video is about. So gaseous relates to anything to do with gases, and exchange means giving and taking. And in this video, we're going to be talking about two gases in particular, which are oxygen and carbon dioxide, and how we exchange those gases or give and take those gases within the respiratory system. So let's start off by being able to label our respiratory system. First of all, we take air in and out through our nose and our mouth. That goes down into the trachea, which is also known as the windpipe. And as it meets the lungs, it breaks down into two slightly smaller tubes called the bronchi, or individually, one would be called a bronchus. The bronchi then splits into smaller tubes called bronchioles. And finally, at the end of these bronchioles, there are the alveoli. These are the air sacs at the end of the bronchioles, and a single alveoli is called an alveolus. The final parts that make up the respiratory system are the diaphragm, which is this muscle at the bottom. And finally, within the chest cavity, you also have the heart. So when we breathe in, air enters our nose and our mouth, air moves down the trachea, then it moves into the bronchi, and then it moves into the bronchioles, and finally it ends up in the air sacs at the end, which are the alveoli. Let's take a closer look at what the alveoli look like. So the alveoli are an air sac and they have a close network of blood vessels called capillaries. If we look at a cross section here, we can see that the capillary runs very close to the wall of the alveoli. The capillary is the smallest blood vessel, and here you can see it is carrying red blood cells. So we'll start by looking at how oxygen moves from the lungs into our blood. So our body needs oxygen. When we breathe in air, one of the gases that is in air is oxygen. And that oxygen will be in a high concentration in the air, so it will diffuse across the alveolar wall into the capillary. And there it binds to haemoglobin within red blood cells, and the red blood cells will take it all around the body to wherever the oxygen is needed. In return, your body produces a waste gas called carbon dioxide, which is CO2. And again, that travels in the blood, but this time it travels in the liquid of the blood called the plasma. So upon returning to the lungs, the blood is carrying waste carbon dioxide, and when that reaches the alveoli, that will diffuse from the capillary into the alveoli. So that's where we're getting that gaseous exchange. Oxygen is diffusing into the blood at the alveoli and carbon dioxide is diffusing out of the blood and we will then breathe that out. The alveoli are very good at gaseous exchange. They are adapted by having moist thin walls which helps with the diffusion of the gases they have a large surface area, which means we can diffuse a lot of gas at once. And they have a close network of capillaries. So the blood can very quickly take the gases to and from the alveoli, which helps maintain a concentration gradient for diffusion. Next, we will look at how the body physically draws in and removes air from the body. And that involves the ribs, which are the bones that protect the respiratory system, the intercostal muscles, which are the muscles that are found between the ribs, and finally the diaphragm, which is the smooth muscle at the bottom of the rib cage. So when we inhale, which means breathe in, our intercostal muscles contract, the rib cage then moves up and out. 
The diaphragm contracts and moves down. The volume in your chest increases. And because of this, the pressure inside your chest decreases. So this means that air moves in. When you exhale, which means breathe out, the opposite happens. Your intercostal muscles relax. Your rib cage moves in and down. Your diaphragm relaxes and moves up. The volume in your chest decreases. And this means that the pressure inside your chest increases and air moves out. Finally, we will look at how the composition of air changes from when you inhale, so when you breathe in, to when you exhale, breathe out. When we inhale, the composition of air is approximately 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and just 0.04% carbon dioxide. And in case you're wondering, because we round the numbers, you'll find that sometimes the composition goes slightly over 100% when we're not completely accurate. When we breathe out, the composition changes. However, not for nitrogen. Nitrogen stays at 79%. Oxygen goes down to around 16%. And carbon dioxide goes up to around 4%. So the reason nitrogen doesn't change is because our body doesn't use nitrogen. However, these are the two gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, that we talked about in the gas exchange in the respiratory system. So oxygen is diffused into the blood and is used up by the body, and carbon dioxide is the waste gas that is diffused from the blood back into the lungs and in the air that we breathe out. Hence, carbon dioxide goes up, but oxygen goes down. The reason that the composition of air is different between inhalation and exhalation is all to do with the process that happens in every cell in our body called respiration. You might have heard of this word because when we looked at cells, we said that respiration happens in the mitochondria. And in this process, we use up oxygen and we produce carbon dioxide. We'll talk about this more in another video, but this will just help explain why carbon dioxide goes up and oxygen goes down. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at GCSCRevisionMonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at ScienceSurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.